Thank you, Sava. So, uh, we are coming to this lecture. Really, I didn't, at the end, I didn't know if I have to give this lecture or not, but I said that we can do it as a repetition of all of what you have been listening from other lecturers during the week. So I will try as much as I can to do it in an interactive way, okay? Because then you are going to say, oh, we have seen these slices I don't know how many times this week. So the management of the thyroid nodule is one of the most controversial issues, as you have realized. Uh, until now, o although we have the latest uh, ATA guidelines, there are still controversies. Different approaches derive from different geographical variations and different backgrounds of physicians and availability of different tests in each country. The objective of the prognostic protocol, of the diagnostic protocol, is to achieve the correct final diagnosis. We aim to have the correct diagnosis for the management of the patient to find out which nodule of all this that he or she are having is the one that requires surgery. We cannot send all the patients for surgery. So, we are nuclear medicine physicians. When I started making my presentation, uh, we had available the American Thyroid Association guidelines of 2009, then they are where the conjoined uh, guidelines uh, issued in 2010. I found some where the Korean of 2012, but in the mean way, two weeks before, we had the latest uh, ATA guidelines. So, should we do blind FNA in all nodules? Is this the more appropriate way when we palpate or if, if we find incidentally a nodule? No. Uh, do we have to use only ultrasound or ultrasound guided FNA will be sufficient. Is it okay? Is it the more cost effective before sending, for choosing the patient to go for surgery? What do you think? Maybe. I have asked this question and uh, I have took my answer from Dr. Stoker that in this diagnostic team there is almost no role of nuclear medicine scanning. Okay, so ultrasound, thyroid scan, and FNA only in solid cold nodules. We are really not necessary and we will increase the cost of the procedures before evaluating, uh, before sending the patient to the surgery. The other way around, as it was 10, 15 years ago, thyroid scan first, do ultrasound only when we are having cold nodules, and make the FNA only in the solid nodules? No. We're increasing the cost too much, yes? Availability of TSH. Make the TSH according to the results of the TSH, which we will see in a while. Make ultrasound-guided FNA. This is going to be the more cost-effective. You think yes. Let's see what the Americans are saying. 
So when we're including the cost into all these procedures, we want to reduce the cost for the thyroid cancer investigations and detections, okay? So the availability of the TSH, the availability now of the ultrasound, the FNA and cytopathology, of course, you have to have good cytology, okay? Reduces the need for surgery and gives to nuclear medicine a secondary role. We are using nuclear medicine only in cases that we are having a suppressed TSH and the endocrinologist or the surgeon or the referring physician who is sending the patients wants to see if this uh, nodule that he is palpating, she is palpating, is functioning because the risk in the functioning nodule for cancer is very low and they will not proceed with the FNA in these nodules. So I have said what we have been, how I start my presentation. So let's have the scenario which we have already. Either a palpable lump in the neck or an incidental finding from any other investigation of a thyroid nodule. The patient is coming to, uh, to you or is going to the endocrinologist, what they will do. Never don't forget the history of the patient, the family history. They are things that nowadays maybe they are skipped. Just the patient is coming to the uh, ordinacy, the doctor is seeing it go make this or go make that. The history of the patient to identify the risk factors is really the first step. If we don't have this, we might, think, uh, we might miss things. The physical examination. Give five minutes to your patient to palpate the neck. We may relieve Apart from the lumps in the thyroid, we might have palpable leaf nodes. Or we can identify the nodules that they are hard or they are not moving, they are fixed, and they have higher uh, risk for malignancy. And then go to diagnostic examinations. How we start? We don't have to avoid the thyroid function test. It's the first thing we have to do. Ask for a TSH. The other test is calcidonin. What do you think? If we have a familial uh, metallary thyroid cancer, we can do it from the beginning, yes? Is there any role for the thyroglobulin in the screening? No, good. So you have been listening to the lectures. So we have TSH. We have the result back. It's normal or high, which means that the patient is either eutyroid or hypothyroid. We will send the patient to the ultrasound. Okay, why to the ultrasound? Because the ultrasound can tell us the nature of the swelling, if we're having solid or cystic, if we have lesions that they look benign, we can see the leaf nodes, we can see the area of the neck, if this lump is extending to the soft tissues around and so on. And Nowadays, the radiologist should say to us the risk for malignancy of these nodules. Somebody was asking me during the week for the malignancy signs of the nodule on the ultrasound. It's 411 pages, the ATA guidelines of 2015, okay? 
in page 25, there are there the main signs for malignant, for suspicion of high malignancy rate of a nodule on ultrasound. The, the more uh, inter not inter um, the more sensitive, let's say, of them, they are the microcalcifications, the ill-defined ill markers on the nodule with speculations or trapeculations into the uh, thyroid tissue, and from the size, the taller than wider. So on the transaxial section, the nodule, if it is taller than wider, with mic microclassifications, or is having these ill-defined markings, it should raise the high suspicion. Okay, and this, they are hypoehoic. The vascularity is not so, if it is only present, the vascularity is not giving so high suspicion for the malignancy of this nodule. But they are on the page 25, they are analyzing all these features one by one. So, ultrasound. We have the result of the ultrasound back. The nodule can be cystic or solid. Or solid with cystic component, or cyst with a solid component inside. Now, if the cystic component is more than 50%, we can aspirate, make cytology. If it's positive, send the patient for surgery. If it's negative, follow up with ultrasound. In which interval? 12 to one to two years, you think is okay, or is too long? Yeah, too big interval for follow-up. Hmm? Depends on the ultrasound, yes. But we should not bring the patient every three months for an ultrasound. We should give some time, because one of the things that we are checking with the repeating ultrasound is the size, if it's increasing, okay? So in order to be able to see any change, we need to have some interval. Now, if the result is solid, I should see, yeah, it's seen. Because it took me three hours to make it. I didn't want to copy in and paste as you have seen it during the week. I just wanted to, to make something uh, for you. Sorry. So we have the results of the ultrasound. If we have high suspicion, according to this criteria, they are set up for the risk of malignancy in the nodule according to the ATA. Or intermediate suspicion, we should FNA these nodules when they are one centimeter or bigger. With the micro, micro calcifications, it might go a bit lower because micro calcifications are having the higher, uh, the higher risk for the malignancy. But they set up the one centimeter as a threshold. If we have low suspicion, the nodule can be FNA when it is 1.5 centimeters and bigger. And when there is very low suspicion, when the nodule is two centimeters big. If the radiologist is absolutely sure that this is a benign nodule, there is no need for FNA. And now, we are having back the results of the FNA. Usually they are according to the, uh, categorized according to the uh, system of Bethesda, and they are categorized on what you see in yellow, either as non-diagnostic, benign, 
atypia of undetermined significance, follicular lesion of undetermined significance, this is the AUS, FL, US, follicular nodule or suspected follicular nodule, suspicious for malignancy or malignant. So you can see that there is really a big range of answers you can, the endocrinologists can take back. So now, if it's non-diagnostic, which they have been telling us that this might be due to a uh, small number of the sample from the FNA, or <coughs> is written there for repeat FNA. It depends the interval. It could be immediately, could be after three months, or in a range according uh, to the clinical findings and to the overall situation of the patient. However, on the previous uh, guidelines, in this non-diagnostic uh, results of the FNA, nuclear medicine was having a role there. So if you have repeatedly non-diagnostic scans, the patient should be sent to nuclear medicine and have a thyroid scan with pertechnidate or iodine 1, 2, 3. This is something that we can discuss it after. If it's benign, okay, this is the patient that doesn't require surgery. The category of this undetermined significance, follicular of undetermined or suspicious for malignancy, is this category that requires really further investigation in order, in order to make up the decision if the patient needs the surgery or not. Some of the referring physicians or the endocrinologists may make molecular testing if it's available. We have uh, listening about that. Repeat the FNA to the if they are going to have more diagnostic result or if during the family history and during, um, because of other factors, they can send the patient for the surgery. And when we're having the malignancy, the patient goes directly to the surgery from this step. So it's just a TSH test, ultrasound with guided biopsy, and the FNA. Now, when the TSH is low, or suppressed or low, below the uh, lower limits of normal, there, there is a suspicion for thyrotoxicosis or uh, subclinical hyperthyroidism, which might be caused by either diffuse toxic goiter or a nodule, if it's palpable, or th uh, thyroiditis, as we have heard. So here is the role of nuclear medicine. The patient is sent to the nuclear medicine to have the thyroid scan, and if we have a hot nodule, the patient could either be treated with iodine 131 or go to surgery. If we have Graves' disease or diffuse, uh, the diffuse toxic goiter, again, we could treat the patient with iodine or go to surgery after we explain the situation to the patient, and this should be uh, the choice of the patient, which treatment to, uh, to have. Or it can be normal, and the patient should be followed up. Um, if we don't see any uptake in the, in the area of the thyroid, and the patient is having separate DSH, what do you think is having? Do we need to treat him with iodine? No. This is usually, okay, I will add something. And have, is having pain in the neck? Yes. So, 
In the era of ultrasound, you have seen that the role of the thyroid scintigraphy is limited to the assessment of the functional activity of the nodules, allowing the distinction between the functioning and non-functioning nodules. Perform when the TSH is suppressed or low, and in cases of multinodular goiter, sometimes they need the endocrinologist or the radiologist to define the nodule uh, that they have to FNA if, if there are several uh, nodules there. So we can help to identify which one is the cold with the higher risk so they can make the FNA for it. So the diagnostic evaluation of thyroid nodules should aim to establish the correct diagnosis and the, patholo and the pathological diagnosis and identify the malignant potential, as is now described from high risk to low risk and no malignancy. We, we are having now the diagnostic tools to achieve that, and they are sensitive enough. When we're having the diagnosis, the patient should have the correct therapeutic options. So I'm having the last uh, slide, and it's something about the cost. These are the cost of the, um, in the hospital of Cyprus, okay? This is the uh, issue, cost. Of course, they have been done this in the Treasury Department without making proper analysis of the cost, what is involved to it. They just fix some prices, and when a patient is going to the hospital and needs to have the evaluation of this, of his thyroid, in the way we have described, he has to pay something if he is not uh, in the category of the patients that can have uh, health care free of charge. So a TSH test cost, or he has to pay 24 euros for a TSH test. I was talking with Mr. Pavlidis the, that he's having a private lab, how much they uh, cost in the plan they charge in the private sector, he told me 25 uh, euros. So it's approximately the level there. The thyroglobulin and antithyroglobulin testing is cost 40 euro each. Of course, we have seen that we don't do it in, this, in the evaluation of the patient to find who is going to go to, to surgery. The ultrasound of the area of the neck, they charge 48 euros. For the FNA, for the radiologist to, to make the FNA or the surgeon to make the FNA, under ultrasound guidance, 125 euros. The result of the cytology, the report of the cytologist, is charged by 50 euros. And the thyroid scan in the nuclear medicine department with, with technetium, 116. So if we're having only the TSH, with the ultrasound, the FNA, and the cytology, you see how much it will cost. Plus, you have to add to this, I don't know how many times the patient has to go to the endocrinologist or to the referring physicians. And if he or she is a physician that for every time the patient is going there, it has to pay 50 euros for the visit to the doctor, then you should add approximately for visits of the endocrinologist. So these are the costs in Cyprus now when we are talking. We don't know how it's going to be when we are going to have our national health care system. Thank you. Thank you, Rena.